Welcome, Northwoods Church. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. So good to see each and every one of you this morning. I pray you've had a blessed and wonderful week. I pray that God has been moving in your life. It's so good to see you in the house of God. It's so good to see our online family. Northwoods Church, can we give our online family a big hand this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so good, again, as always, to gather together with brothers and sisters, and with like-minded believers, uh, for the ministry of gospel of Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray that you're as excited as I am this morning about what the Lord is doing and what He's going to continue to do. Um, those three weeks off really, really shook me a little bit, you know, and I, I just begin, um, when you come in and we minister to an empty church, it's, it's, you know, you still get excited about ministering the Word of God, but it's different when you can look out and you can see your brothers and sisters um, being able to receive it, watching the expressions of them as they receive it. It's a much greater blessing um, to me, uh, being on the stage, seeing that. So I'm just always grateful to have you with us this morning. If you are visiting this morning, Northwoods Church, can we give every visitor we have with us today a big hand? We welcome you to Northwoods Church. If this is your first time here, we want to say welcome to Northwoods Church. If this is your second time here, we say welcome home. It's so good to have you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Will you stand all over the house this morning as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer? How many come expecting a move of God this morning? Oh, come on. We got, three. we got three that came this morning. How many came expecting a move of God this morning? Yes. Amen. Well, I'm excited this morning about getting into worship. There's nothing greater than worshiping the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. When you really sit back and think about all that he's done for you, can you, can you not worship him? Amen. When you know that, that, that he's brought you out of those dark places. Maybe you're in a battle of your life right now and your ground around you shaking a little bit. The Bible says that we know in whom we have believed and we can trust in him. He is our leader. He is our guide. He is our director. He is our friend. And more than any of that, he is our savior. So this morning, I encourage you to join in and worship with us. Get excited for Jesus Christ. Get crunk for Christ. Get, get lit for Christ and whatever other cool modern day pop words we can use just get excited for God this morning he is great and greatly to be praised let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we're going to jump right into worship and I ask you to invite you to worship with us this is a free uh, spirited church so if you want to wave your hands wave your hands if you want to dance dance if you want to come down to these altars and pray these altars are always open we just encourage you to give God what he is worthy of this morning and that is your full attention your full honor your full praise return it to God and I promise you when you praise God blessings come down Father God we thank you this morning for your many blessings we thank you Lord for the opportunity the freedom and the liberty we have to gather in your house God I thank you Lord that we're not here by chance this morning but we are here by divine direction God by divine appointment Lord I believe that your Holy Spirit has a has an instruction this morning God to grip the very hearts of the unbeliever God to expose Lord God the things that need to be changed in our hearts and in our lives Lord God I believe that there is going to be a light that shines in the path this morning God that the righteous men and women of God would know the next steps to take God I pray that you would awaken every spirit that has went into slumber God those that have begun to doubt those that have begun to be be flustered with frustration and anxiety God I pray that this morning there be a great awakening God of your spirit Lord that there be baptisms of the Holy Ghost God that there be an arising of the church Lord God that makes demons tremble Lord I pray God that you would move as only you can and we'll be careful to give you the praise the honor and the glory so God these next few moments are dedicated to you Lord we worship you we lift you up we exalt the name of Jesus Christ this morning for you are great and greatly to be praised in the name of Jesus Northwoods Church let's say amen let's worship
scripture found in John chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 Jesus was speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well he said but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him God is a spirit they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth she was telling and explaining to Jesus how that you worship God in this place, the Jews, and we worship here. But the Lord was telling her, or explaining to her, worship comes from the heart. The Father seeketh such to worship Him. Amen. He is seeking those that will worship Him from the heart. Whether it be in Jerusalem or in the mountain or anywhere. I praise God and I thank Him that I can worship my Lord in my home. I can worship Him in my car going down the road. Amen. And I can worship Him in my prayer closet. Amen. The Father seeketh such to worship Him. What the Lord was letting her know, there's more to worship in God than just a religious experience. Amen. It is something that comes from the heart. And you give from your heart this morning as you give to the Lord. Like I said, that is a that is much a part of worship as, as anything that you can do when it comes to worshiping the Lord. Let's, if you would and you're able, I want to ask if you would stand. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessing over this offering that we're about to receive. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for what we've already felt in this place today. Thank you for each and every one that is here. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing them safely out. And I pray, Lord God, you would touch this offering. Bless it, God, to the furtherment of your kingdom. Bless the giver and the gift. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your gift.
Good morning. I come with the joke of the day. No, I'm just joking. Um, I'm going to bring my wife up here, and we just want to um, talk a little bit about Reach Out, just explaining what we're going to do on the 20th that's coming up this month. And just, um, I know a lot of people have been asking what can they do to help, so we just want to explain a few things. But firstly, we just want to, bottom of our heart, thank Northwoods and the pastors for continuing to support us even when times it looked rough and we didn't know what we were doing but uh they had faith and they knew from our past that we kind of knew what we were doing so they kept pressing us um but anyways with that being said i'm gonna let my wife talk because she was like you know i want you to say something short right and then she wrote me this book <laughs> and was like and i was like good lord and she's like oh scratch that and i'm like <laughs> I'm going to let you say some stuff, so here you go. Amen. He was supposed to do all of it, but um, I'm just going to start by telling you that um, what Reach Out is doing, we're working on becoming a resource center to be able to help families and individuals to get to a good place. Um, whether it's an emergency situation or it's been a long time situation, we kind of want to be the place they can come to for resources and if we can't help them we're going to send them to a place that can help them um, so we wanted to do we started with the food box for families um, because that's an immediate need we could help with while we're working on the other stuff so that's going to be on February 20th it's a Saturday from 12 to 4 it's by appointment only and so if you guys know anyone individual or family that's in need of that um, please let me or Chris know or Jamie um, or Jessica or Terry. Um, they've been helping with everything as well. Um, and uh, we'll get a time set up for them on that Saturday. We're going to do it one uh, Saturday a month to try to help as many families as we can. And then as things progress, we'll fill you in more of what's going on. Thank Amen. you. Yeah. And on uh, helping what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put like a tub outside in the foyer and if you feel led to, you know, bring some canned goods or anything that, you know, that we can give back. We even have some dog food and cat food because we know there's families that don't have kids but love their pets more than humans. So we, we wanna take care of them too, you know, so we, we can make up care packages for, for in that sense. So whatever you feel led to do, even if it's financially, you know, just co contact one of us, and, and that, that would help out, because it will go to a good cause, we promise. And um, right now, we do have, what, 14, 16 people signed up, and there's 40 slots. So definitely, if you know anybody that's need, in need, please let us know and tell them to call or message or whatever. So, and we, we appreciate everybody. We love you guys. Amen. And one more thing, baby shower today. Y'all don't forget, men and women can come. Josh would really, at three o'clock, and Josh would really love anything to do with fishing, hunting. Um, it's, for, it's for little Zeke. I mean, he's gonna use it when he gets older. It'll be broken and ready for him. So just don't forget, and uh, if you have any questions, please see Candy. She's got all the answers, I promise. <laughs> and I'm just going to add this. If you want to see our pastor in a new way today, you might want to be here today. Just, just going to leave that there. Some of y'all will understand that a little bit later on. Just, just going to leave that there. <laughs> Amen. Well, who's ready to worship God? Amen. Amen. Yes. All right, three of us. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? We're going to stand up and we're going to worship God, all right? Silence is the enemy. Let praise be the 
weapon that conquers all anxiety. So let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. And we sing Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh we praise you. Oh.
Come on, church, sing to him. This is what freedom feels like. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sing like you truly have freedom we this morning. Pray. Come on. We praise we you, Lord. We praise you this morning. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. scripture and I'm not exactly I don't know exactly where it's at but he promised he said I'll save your household the only way he's gonna save your household is we got to be you know we got to be that door of worship and praise that he can come through and everything that's on the inside he'll work he said he'd save it I've got grandchildren that are lost and it breaks my heart to think that one moment they can be taken out into eternity lost without God but I pray every time I open my mouth, I say, God, whatever it takes. I don't care what it is, but whatever it takes to bring my grandchildren to you. God, I'd rather see them laying on their deathbed and know they've given their heart to you than to be lost and undone without you and go to hell. You've got to be willing to let, let it go. If you pray, God, your will be done, you've got to step back and let God do it His way. And it ain't always pretty to our sight and to what we see and feel. But I promise you, God knows what He's doing. And He has control of it all. But we've got to trust Him. God will save your household. But we, He's got to start with us first.
I'm, I'm going to make it quick. Um, and I talked to the pastor. He knows. Um, I visited a church. And, you know, whether you out there want to feel what they feel right here, and let me tell you, you, you come right here and you can feel it. Um, but it doesn't just stay up here. Right. You have the power in you to bring what these worshiping people are getting up here, out there. Yeah. And if you just want it to stay up here, then you just stand there. I mean, that, that's all you got to do. But if you want to feel what they're feeling up here, what pastor's going to feel when he gets up here and preaches, you can have that too. All you have to do is lift your hands. Praise a little bit. I mean, you don't even have to jump around or anything. Just lift your hands in the air and let the spirit move through the church. And everybody in here can be on the same page and feel the same thing. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Amen. How many knows he's worthy of it all? Check your 
I answered your prayer, Shay. You know, it just doesn't always look the way that we think it's going to look like. I thought it would be a process, you know. But, so I'm, I'm, I just want you to know that he does, when he does answer, I, I think we just need to be thankful, you know. know about you but the Holy Spirit begins to move maybe it's just me that I noticed but I noticed that there's different levels for different people depending on where you are in your life depending on where you are in your walk with God that presence of his Holy Spirit that not only is down on the inside of you but when you start feeling it around you it does something. It, it makes you want to speak. It makes you want to lift your hands. It makes you want to step out. It makes you want to testify. It makes you, it makes you just want to rejoice. I don't know if you've ever been at that place where it makes you, it makes you just want to bow. To know that a God so holy, a God so pure, a God so powerful would look down on a little blemished vessel like me and say I choose you I want to use you can I let you in on a secret this morning he does not examine your past to find out if he can do that with you he takes the broken clay and he makes it again into a new vessel so that when any man be in Christ he is a new creation. Right. Old things. Somebody look at, look at your old past and say old things old are passed away. He says all things become new. So maybe you're, you, you've wondered or you've been curious and you've asked yourself, and I feel the presence of God, but I don't, I don't feel like they're feeling. I don't, I'm not acting like they're acting. Is what I feel real. Can I tell you this morning, God loves you so much that he deals with you on an individual level so that he can use you on a corporate level. See, he's got to deal with you individually. He's got to teach you how to hear him, how to feel him, how to, how to sense his presence, how to discern what is real and what is not. Because can I tell you, everything that speaks, everything that grabs a microphone, everything that sings a song, everything that preaches from this Bible is not led by the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, do all things decent and in order. 
And when we start taking away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, we start seeing the Holy Spirit being pushed further and further out. Amen. And that is when the enemy makes his move to devour the walls of our lives that Christ has built around his city and his people. I believe God has orchestrated this service this morning for a purpose and for a reason and for a time because I, if you were here last week, you know we, I was pretty hard on leaders in the church. But at the same time, I gave encouragement on how, as a leader, not to, not to just ignore the signs, but to be a difference maker, to be an atmosphere changer, to, to set up a, a, a place, to set up a, a, a center, spiritually speaking, set up that resource center, as, as Chris and Talia is doing with the, with the reach out ministry in the physical realm, teaching us how to do that spiritually, to make sure that we are not breaking walls and breaking stones that God has put in our presence. And I believe this, this morning's sermon is orchestrated by God. I didn't have any idea how this service was going to go this morning. I always look forward to worship, and it's been great. But I believe that God has orchestrated this word this morning for this very hour. I believe everybody that needs to hear it is here today. Not because you're guilty or not because you're not guilty, but simply because God looks at you and says, I choose you, and I want to use you. It's one thing to be chosen by God. It's another thing to be used by God. Because when God chooses us, that's out of His grace and out of His mercy. But when we're used by God, that's by our reception of what He has given to us. That is by us accepting what He has done for us on Calvary's cross and us saying, okay God, I believe your blood is sufficient. I believe that no matter what the enemy tells me about my past, no matter about that abusive relationship that I was in, no matter how, my home that was broken when I was growing up, no matter the, the addictions and the, and the losses that I've suffered along my life, no matter all those things, God, I believe that your word says, Lord, that your blood is sufficient enough and that you are able to use me so when you are chosen you're called by God but when you're used by God that's because you've accepted that presence around you that that moment when God moves around you and in your life and he makes it your availability see God is not looking on how well you are equipped to decide whether he can use you he's looking at your availability are you available are you available to be used by God? Only you can answer that question this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and pray with you. And we're going to get into the word this morning because I believe God has a word for each and every one of us this morning. We have been on this series, The Repair of the Breach. And last week we preached on the sermon, Lord, let me build and not break. Lord, I don't want to be guilty of breaking your walls when in the whole time I was hoping to build them. But when we step out of the will of God and we start trying to orchestrate things and do things our way, we tend to start hurting the very things God sent to build us. And this morning, I want to just go a little further with that. Out of the book of John, verse 31 through 35. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom... Oh, that's the wrong scripture, fellas. John chapter 13, <laughs> verse 31 through 35. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him... God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another listen to this one right here this is the highlighted verse of the day by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another how will people know if, if I'm a disciple 
well, if I speak in tongues, or if I go to church, or if I put scriptures on Facebook, or if I, if I, if I preach a little bit, or sing a little bit, or if I write a song. Jesus said, you want people to know that you are my disciple? He said, love one another. Show your love above your emotions. Show your love above your anger. Show your love above your need to get even. Show your love for one another. When it's easier to break people down, are you willing to build them up? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you this morning for your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you're moving in us so that we will move in you. God, you are not here for entertainment. You are here to reach us, to teach us, to grow us, and to guide us, and to, Lord, use us in the world that we might show the light of, of, the, of, of the Lord unto the lost and dark and dying world. God, make us a city on a hill this morning that cannot be hid, Lord God. Let us not hide our light under the bushel, but let us shine brightly, Lord. Let, let, the, let us glorify the Father in our good works. Lord, let me decrease this morning that you might increase. I pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, that if there be any need in this house, that before we leave, that there will be co complete reliance on the power of your Holy Spirit. And God, that you will not only supply the need, but Lord God, you will give abundantly above all that we ask or think. We ask these things this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Look at two or three people say, it's time to get to work. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning on the subject, a hurt church. A hurt church. We talked last week about how sometimes it is intentionally, sometimes it can be mistakenly done, but churches hurt people. The only one in here, but um, statistics would tell me that that's not the case, but how many people in here, just, ask, just answer to yourself, but have experienced church hurt. Maybe you've been hurt by a pastor. Maybe you've been hurt by a leader in the church. Maybe you've been hurt by another church member. Or maybe you've just been hurt because your expectations of the church were not met. If I had to subtitle this sermon this morning, I would do it with the cliche that we all know. Hurt people hurt people. When, when you see some, sometimes you see people that get church hurt. They go over here and they get church hurt. So they go over here to this other church. And they take their emotions from that group to this new setting and this new leadership. And they begin bleeding on people that didn't cut them. They begin punishing people that didn't punish them. They begin holding a standard against people that never done any damage to their lives. Hurt people, hurt people. I want to show you this morning that by being hurt, the enemy uses that as an open gate to begin to tear down the walls of our cities. Tear down the walls of our Jerusalems. Tear down the walls of our sanctuaries. Tear down the walls of our prayer lives with God. Simply because we've been hurt. See, being hurt by the church is not something that happens just once in a while. Sadly, we are far too often people that have been wounded by God's family. I can promise you this. If you are unaware of this, I want to go ahead and break the news to you. If you attend church on a regular basis, it's not if but when you get hurt because at the end of the day God has entrusted people with shepherding his flock God has entrusted men and women men and as leaders women as leaders to come in and to to teach the gospel but the problem is is a lot of times people put the expectations of God on man and when man cannot reach their expectations they get hurt and they get bitter and they get cold and then the enemy begins to divide and the enemy begins to tear asunder what God had joined together we oftentimes quote that scripture in weddings let you know what God has joined together let no man tear asunder but in the, in the reality of the context, it is anything that God joins together. Not just a man and a woman, but a church and a membership. But a, but a community and a church. But a, but a political office and, and spiritual acquaintances. What God has joined together, let no man tear asunder. Amen. But see, leaders are sometimes in conflict with other believers. 
robbed of the joy that Jesus promised. Can, I can't tell you, and I've even been guilty of this, how many pastors that I know, how many leaders that I know that have either quit their ministries, they've left churches uh, prematurely simply because membership was, was hard to deal with and, and there was a couple people that was making it difficult, giving headaches, and a lot of times this caused us to give up on our joy because the focus became our problems and not our God. And it's, hard, it's, it's very easy to, to say that, you know, you just got to go past that. But it's, it's a lot easier said than done. When God has entrusted you with people and you love people and you've got a heart to see souls saved. And that's not just on a pastor. Many of you, you're in here because God gripped your life. And it is your goal to set out to reach people and bring the church with you. But it is hard and it's painful and it's punishing when people look at you as the reason they can't grow to God. It, it, it's painful. So you have leaders that are in conflict with leaders, members that are in conflict with members, believers that are in conflict with believers, and, the, and, and we're giving up and we're being robbed of the joy that God promised each and every one of us. See, when we examine our own bruised souls, it can make us want to leave churches. When we start examining how we've been bruised and how we've been cut, it gives us to the point that we even put God on a back burner because ultimately He is the reason we're hurt, right? We have come to accept the fact that being hurt by the church is inevitable. We, we, we expect that now. We, once we start growing in God, we understand it's going to happen. Leading many people to just two choices. And if I could be honest with you, neither one of these choices are going to save you or help you move forward. But the two choices that it narrows us down to is number one is we stay away and we let our hearts become cold and bitter. See, the, the, the cliche that we like to use today is anytime you go through trials and persecutions and situations is let your, let your, your, your temporary problem make you better, not bitter. But when you start getting bitter, you start getting defensive. And when you start getting defensive, you start offending. See, when you, when you are going on the defense, you are against the offense. And when you start getting defensive, you start offending people. The Bible says it is impossible that any of us should escape offenses. And he said, woe unto them and who the offenses come. But it is a choice. See, it is inevitable that we will be faced with offenses. But it is a choice to live offended. Amen. The Bible never says that we have to be offended. But it says we will have offenses against us. But it is a different thing. To be offended. We stay away from churches. We stay away from Bible study groups. We stay away from our Bible study time. We stay away from our worship and time with God. And we get cold and we get bitter because we're hurt. Or the other option that we have is we put on our Sunday's best. And we hope that the problems just go away. We don't face them. We don't confront them. We don't go against them. We don't, we don't try to nip it in the bud and, and cut the tree down at the root. We just avoid it long enough until it finally goes away. But what happens when someone bumps into that old problem you used to have? It wakes it back up and it has sprouted into something so much bigger. And I'm going to give you scripture for that here in just a moment. But my question for us this morning is, can we as repairers of the breach, that is our vision this year, that is our hope this year, Lord, make Northwoods Church, make us a people that are repairers of the breach, Lord, that we don't become a part of the issue, we don't become a part of the problem, but we become repairers of the breach, people that look at a broken wall and say, I'm going to work, even if I have to work with a sword in one hand and a tool in the other, I'm going to work while it is day because night cometh when no man can work, Lord, let me break the cycle. My question for us this morning is, can we break the cycle? Because I am continually amazed at the simplicity of God's word. As a matter of fact, the Bible even tells us that many will, will go astray. Many will be so lost and confused simply because they don't observe the simplicity of God's word. We live in a modern day time where everything has to be deep. And if it's not deep, I don't want to hear it. If you're not preaching something deep and unraveling some, some myst mystical a revelation then it's not it's not good and we've oftentimes made salvation become so difficult and so hard to comprehend that that, it, that people that are broken people that are that are lost people that, that don't know the way feel like there's no hope for them because we've made salvation so deep and so difficult when it is the simplicity of the God's word that will lead us unto everlasting life 
It is simple to know that God loves you. Yes, does it sound too good to be true in a worldly environment? Absolutely. But when you're talking about a holy God that can do anything and everything and abundantly above all that we ask or think, it is exactly possible because God is in it. <coughs> but we, I get amazed at the simplicity of God's word and the direct instructions that he shares with us. Do you know that God's word gives us instructions for every aspect of life? You might be a business owner and you're asking questions about your next move. If I, can I tell you that if you get into God's word, there are answers on how you are to operate businesses. There are, there are, there are answers on how you are to be a parent. There are answers as, as to how you are to teach and guide and discipline your children. That there is a guide in there on how the things you are to connect with, the things you're not to connect with, the, everything you do. And being the subject is talking about church hurt this morning. Can I tell you that the Bible gives us plain, simple instructions on how to deal with church hurt. But again, when we get bitter and we get cold, the last thing we want to do is use God's word to fix it. Because ultimately, even if we don't want to confess it, down the, somewhere down the way, God is being blamed because he called that pastor that hurt me. God is being blamed because I needed a healing in my family and you didn't give it to me. I needed, I needed to see my child saved and it didn't happen. I needed this and this. And we're not looking into God's word. We're just at, at making God try to live up to our expectations. The father's heart towards us, his children, is so open and loving. He so wisely instructs us in the way that we should live. Even in the midst of messiness where the rubber meets the road, God is showing us how to live. The steps that God gives us to live together in unity are simple. The problem is, is they're not necessarily easy. There are steps that can help us move from being reactive in a conflict to being proactive to keep conflict from arising or getting out of hand. We are to be a reactive or a proactive people, not a reactive people. And as steps always do, if you will walk the steps that God has for you, when you walk the steps, your steps at home, it takes you higher. When you go get home and you need to get to your front door and you walk up those steps, every time you go to another step, your elevation rises a little bit. And then you reach the door, you reach the entrance, you reach the heights. The same way with the steps that God gives us. If we'll walk one step at a time and don't quit because the first step didn't offer victory. Don't quit because the second step didn't offer victory. But keep taking the steps. Every step you're going to find yourself growing closer and closer to God. So what is this? What is this that helps us? What is the simple teaching that God gives us? Love. One of the most misused words in the Bible. One of the most misunderstood words of the church. Love. Because if you love someone, you can't hurt their feelings, right? It depends what's hurting their feelings. Is the fact that you are telling them the truth of God's word, does that hurt their feelings? See, we live in a day where we, we are more concerned about being appreciated of man and being politically correct and being, being held at the standard of approval of the world that we've forsaken being held accountable to God. We've forsaken being a holy priesthood, a holy people, a holy nation set apart. We've forsaken the idea of wanting to grow closer to God. We are wanting the shower and power of God to fall in every service and baptisms and tongue talking and prophetic words being given and being shed abroad. But yet we are, we are walking out of this church and we are walking out of these buildings every day not caring who's hurt, not caring who's offended, not caring who's been broken, not caring if we are even walking out of here in the holiness of God, as long as our experiences are what we want them to be. My, my, my first point would be, ask yourself, when I sit under the preaching of the teaching of the gospel, is my heart in tune with what is being taught? Would I ratch, watch, much rather discuss the things that are going to happen later after the service? Would I, would I like to make the jokes of the day. Would I, would I much rather, because let me tell you something, God says that we are to be a cheerful people. But when the word of God becomes the joke every time, when the word of God becomes the, the, the moment where we giggle and we laugh and we just, we just, we make a mockery of the teaching of the gospel, how will we ever expect those that are following us to want to grow in God any further? The steps that God gives us are simple, but they're not very easy. Love is the framework upon which steps are built. 
If you want to go to higher levels, if you want to grow with unity, there is going to have to be a love that is biblically understood, not worldly interpreted. Love is also the handrail. It is not only the steps, but it is the handrail in which we grip as we move up the steps of life. The Bible says, as I read in John 13, 35, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. And as in all things, God wants us to obey him in the power of the Holy Spirit and not in our own strength. In other words, I can't formulate in my mind, say, well, the way I look at it is if, is if, if they really want to be a part of this movement, they're going to have to get on board. If they, if, if they really want to be saved, then they're just going to have to do some things and fix some things. Listen, the last time I checked, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit convicts us and draws us unto God. When someone comes and asks me, Brother Josh, how, what is your view? What is your belief? What has God shared with you and showed you about this circumstance or this situation that the Bible doesn't plainly state as being right or wrong? See, I, I can't just say, well, the way I look at it is, is, this, is way it's, this is what you need to do. Because then they're going to live their whole life going on what I look at. But when they ask me, I'll be more than glad to tell them why I believe what I believe. Because the Bible narrows it down very simple. And it says, to him that knows to do right and doeth it not, it is sin. In other words, if you know that there is a conviction about what you are doing, chances are God is trying to pull you away from that very thing. Yes, the Bible may not say you're going to go to hell for it. The Bible may not say that it's an abomination. The Bible, but if God is trying to lead you somewhere, it is important in order to get to the next step that you get off the last step. You can't be on every step at the same time. That when I got saved, there was things that God convicted me of. And then there was things that He did not. But as I grew closer to God and I began to... I began to pursue ministry and I began to pursue uh, license and credentials. God began convicting me of even greater things. Things that the Bible doesn't say is wrong. And you've got to be willing to go there. But love is the thing that guides you through all of that. And what happens is, is when we allow people to be hurt, and we allow uh, the hurt that we've happened to be, exp to be shared abroad because we're angry, we're hurt, we're, we're broken, and because I'm not being fixed, we begin hurting other people. Sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. But we don't speak to them at church because we're angry. We don't want to step up and help with nothing because we're upset and we're angry. We don't want to answer. We don't want to answer our call. We just want to be leaders on Sundays and Wednesdays. We don't want to hear about none of y'all during the rest of the week because we're hurt and we're angry and we're, we're, we're mad and we're, we're bent and we're broken. And we don't want anything else. The Bible says that we are stones. We are lively stones set there. In 1 Peter 2 and 5 it says, You also, as lively stones, are built up as a spiritual house. In other words, if we are ever going to build the walls back up that the, that the world has allowed to come into our churches and break our walls, we've got to understand we are the stones that God wants to use. And you can't take a busted stone and put pressure on it. Because if you take a busted stone and you put pressure on it, it's only going to break away. That is why it is important that we have a healing ministry, that we have a prayer ministry, people that know how to discern when people are broken, when people are hurt. That way you don't throw ministry on them so quickly that it crumbles them. Them and it pushes them and it makes them even despise church that much more. I'll be honest with you. I'm thankful that the Lord has, has shielded me and protected me. But I, if I have to be honest with you, I would say that it wouldn't have hurt anything for me to been held back from stepping into full-time ministry a little longer. Because I got to the place after I got my first pastoral position I got to the place where I got aggravated with people. You know, I always told people, I was like, you know what? God, I ain't got no problem with you. It's your children that I can't stand. <laughs> you know, I would just get to the place where I was like, Lord, if, it, if I could just serve you and not have to deal with people, I'd be all right. But I was, what happened was I was getting upset because I, I, was, I was trying to show them vision. I was trying to, trying to let them see, let's look ahead of where we want to go. Let's not just operate up for today, but let's also work towards reaching the community. What is this community needs? And if we're, if we're just only going to come to church, then what's the purpose? 
If we're not going to do ministry, if we're not going to reach lost souls, if we're not going to try to help the broken ones, what purpose do we serve? And I felt like I was getting flat, like, oh, we don't, Lord, Brother Josh, if we get too big, I don't even want to be here. Lord, if you, we start getting all these different races in here, I don't want to be here. If we start getting, you know, the, this, if we start changing the, the lights and the colors, and I don't want to be here. And all this stuff, and I, you know, I got so bitter. I got so bitter every time you walk in the office and hit the answer machine is somebody needs you to pay their light bill. They were they, they done bought 300 lottery tickets this year, but they need somebody or this month and they need somebody to pay their light bill. But I got to the point that I was so bitter that I'd be walking into a parking lot at Walmart or Publix or, or wherever else. I'd be walking up to the to the building and someone would walk up. And before they could even ask, ask me for anything, I'd shut them down. I'd shut them down. Like, I don't want to hear it. I, don't, I ain't got no money for you. Just get out of my face. I don't want to hear it. And one day God gripped me and he says, what is it about these people that you hate so much? And man, that, that broke me. And don't get me wrong. I still ain't the kind of person that's going to go out throwing dollar bills to people just because they ask. Um, so don't get any ideas. But at the same time, God convicted me as, listen, you can't let your experience with one be the result of many. In other words, just because the first five were doing it in a wrong manner doesn't mean number six is wrong. You can't punish the whole church. You can't punish all the leadership. You can't punish the whole world because a couple people hurt you. Because what happens is you're bleeding on people that didn't cut you. What kind of love are you showing to the world that God has? When your bitterness keeps you from loving those you do not know. The Bible doesn't say love, you just love your friends. As a matter of fact, he plainly goes on to tell us that if you love your friends, what reward is that? Even the enemy loves their friends. He says, but I say unto you to love your enemies. I say unto, me, unto you, pray for those who spitefully use you. So the first step, and this is going to have to be a two-part sermon. I don't have near enough time today to, to preach everything. But I want to give you just two of my points this morning. The first one is, you've got to know your enemy. If I'm ever going to get over my hurt, if I'm ever going to get over my conflict with other people, with other ministers, with other churches, and with other leaders, and with other singers, and with other teachers, I'm going to have to know my enemy. We don't like to focus on the devil. I mean, I've been around people before, boy, that if you, if you say anything about the devil, don't you say it. You're giving him glory. Don't you give the devil glory. If you, give, you're, you speak life and death in your tongue, you're giving the devil glory and blah, blah, blah. Well, go talk to Paul about that because he's the one that told me, be sober and be vigilant because the devil, your adversary, goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There's not warnings in the Bible of the enemy if we are not to be honest with ourselves of his capability. Abilities if we get ourselves caught away from the flock. Amen. You can have all the hopes you want to, but the anointing of God is the only thing that's going to destroy the yoke. You can say, well, I got vision. I've got a dream. I had a dream. I'm, I got a, a desire. But unless you got the anointing, which comes through the flowing of the Holy Spirit, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit, the only thing the tree that is planted by will yield its fruit in different seasons is the, the water. Unless you got that water flowing in you, you, you're going to be stuck trying to fight the enemy in your own strength. We cannot fight the enemy in your own strength. You have to know your enemy. We don't want to give the devil glory, but yelling and failing to heed the warning of Scripture that the devil actually has the power to prowl around and devour those that are open to him, we are ignoring how we, are to, how we could be used. And before I go any further, let me just say this. And I'm talking from personal experience. God doesn't take something and put you right back in it and say, oh, now you're the Savior. See, we got so many people that never really wanted to get out. They just exchanged their addictions. They, they, didn't, they never got delivered from their addiction. They just exchanged their addictions. They're addicted to feeling high on God. And the only way they can feel high on God is to get around high friends and talk about how high they are on God. But in the reality of it, any drug that I ever done in my years of addiction, there, anytime there was a high, there was also a come down. And that's why I don't believe that we ought to refer to God as a high because you never come down from His glory. He is always there. Even in the midst of your battles, He is always there. 
God doesn't rescue from a situation just to put you right back in it as though you are the Savior. Yes, I was in drug addiction and I was spent down and I would talk to drug addicts. But you won't find me in crack houses talking to drug addicts. Because there has to be a desire on their part. There has to be something. If they bump me onto the, uh, they bump, bump into me on the sidewalk, I'll pray with them. I'll do something. But I'm not going to go put myself in the enemy's courts and expect that the Lord's just going to shine a bright light. Unless I have direct, direct doggone uh, instruction from God, you ain't going to find me putting myself in the middle of those things. Men uh, that, that, have, that have dealt with, with, with being a womanizer their whole life, feeling like they, they're going to go talk to women and they're going to help them with their problems. If you don't know that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, let me paint this picture for you. It is not God putting you in temptation, but God does not tempt you. He is not going to put you in temptation. He is not going to put you in the powers of where, where the enemy once had you. I've been to rehabs and preached. And guess what? I've seen souls saved. I've been to jails and preached. And I've seen souls saved. Because they were at a place in their life where they were ready to give up what they once had and receive what God had for them. But I did not put myself in bad situations and in bad places and just call it ministry. That's where you get hurt. You get hurt when you start putting yourself out there and you wonder why everybody looks at you all crazy when you walk in the door. Well, you just spent 15, 20 years in addiction. You've been saved 30 minutes and all of a sudden you're called to go live with addicts and tell them about the whole world. The Bible says, do not let your good be evil spoken of. In other words, don't put yourself in a situation where you got the same identity as you once had. If you're going to talk to those people, go find them in the jails. Go find them in the rehab. But if they're not looking for help, what are you going to do? You're setting yourself up to be hurt and to hurt other people. Seeking whom he may devour. We find ourselves consumed, devoured by all kinds of irritations when we find in one another and in the church conflict. When in conflict with another believer, we need to ask ourselves the question, am I wrestling against flesh and blood? I'm going to surprise you with this answer. Yes. Yes, you're wrestling with flesh and blood. You know, if my wife comes up to me and says, Josh, you don't need a boat. That's the devil. But if me and her have a disagreement on whether I should have a boat, I'm wrestling her. If me and her have a disagreement on how loud the music needs to be, I'm wrestling her. Obviously, we're wrestling flesh and blood. But this is why everybody's confused. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So in other words, we take away, either we Go all in and we blame the flesh without looking at the spiritual root of the things. Or we throw scripture out there real quick and say it's not flesh and blood. So we just let sister so and so bash us and talk bad about it and just disturb the service because it ain't her. It's the spirit. Absolutely. Yes. And I'm Josh to me. And if I get baptized in the Holy Ghost and he uses me, then by all means I'm going to be used. But the same way the Holy Spirit can use you, so can the enemy use you. And as a Holy Ghost filled baptized believer, when the enemy speaks up and starts up writing stuff, I got the right to tell the person that's being used by the devil that you got a problem and you can hush. You can either let the devil go or you can go with him. You know? Because it is a flesh thing. It is a flesh issue. Flesh has has, has desires. Every person in this room, if I went around and said, what's your favorite worship song? You'd have piles of different worship songs. If I ask you, what's your favorite style of preaching? You'd have some people that likes the teacher. You'd have some people that likes the, 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 the Pentecostal, pew running, Holy Ghost fire believer. If I, and some would just I, just, I just like somebody that can just tell me the truth. I don't care how they give it to me. You, you have different aspects. Those are all carnal desires of, of the same thing. But the problem is, is we, we, we're afraid to understand that, yes, the flesh is part of the battle. But the flesh is not the root of the problem. See, the solution is so simple that we usually miss it. Christi as Christians, we must remember that our soul opponent is the, in the spiritual realm. In other words, I can work out my conflict with Ashley or with you 
And we, it might buy us a little bit of time. But if I don't realize that I, I'm, I've got to continuously be in the battle against the spiritual realm, the things in the spiritual realm that are trying to hold me back, I'm just going to continue bumping into small conflicts to where sooner or later I'm going to begin pointing fingers. If it wasn't for her, I'd have made it. If it wasn't for him, I'd have done it. If it wasn't for that church, I'd have been there here or I'd have been there. And we began pointing fingers realizing that Satan's mandate is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Amen. In John 10, 10, he says that the enemy cometh but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But aren't you glad that that's not the whole scripture? Amen. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and life abundantly. So instead of reminding ourselves of that fact, we put on the gloves and we begin engaging in battle with one another, leaving scratches and scars and bruising and bleeding. Because we're unaware that our, the root of our issues is in the spiritual realm. That the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and to destroy. Any pervasive or downward spiral, it needs to be called what it is. You can't make it look pretty. A downward spiral is a downward spiral. It is a, it is a journey in the wrong direction. It is, it is not good. You know, there's one thing to take a sabbatical and go spend time with God. It's another thing to take a sabbatical so you don't have to deal with ministry. Be alert to the red flags. See, our human nature wants to defend and justify ourselves. God knows the propensity of our hearts to go their own way. And that is why he calls us to pray for our enemies, Matthew 5, 44. And to do good to those who spitefully use us, Luke 6, 27. It is only by trusting the Holy Spirit's power in our lives whenever we feel weak or frustrated that we, can, that we can begin to engage in the true battle that is fought in the spiritual realm, yet lived out in our churches. What you have to understand is the battles you fight in the Spirit, whether they be victorious or whether they be defeat, are going to be lived out in your ministries. They're going to be lived out in the churches. You take someone that, can't, that doesn't have a prayer life and then they come to church. Every time conflict arises, you're going to see it bleeding over onto the church. You take someone who doesn't have a worship experience, that doesn't, doesn't know how to exalt God, doesn't know how to hear from God, you're going to continuously get opinions after opinions that are going to sooner or later cause hurt and division. Because you know as well as I do, when people don't get their way, they have to get support somewhere. So you know what they do? They look at their neighbor on the pew and they keep probing until they find somebody that'll listen and they find someone that agree and they'll find you know what that bothers me too now it went from one hurt person to two hurt people and then we start seeing multiple bricks taking out of the wall and the walls keep you got one group over here trying to build the wall up and you got another group over here taking them back out we're working against each other when we do that the bible says to be alert and always keep on praying ephesians 6 and 18 be alert because your devil, the adversary, goes about seeking whom he may devour. But Ephesians 6 and 18 says, be alert and always keep praying. Always giving supplication. Always fighting on your knees and warring on your knees. You know, one of the best things that I have found works in this ministry is I don't care who, he, who meets me at the door after a service. Whether it's they tell me I loved your preaching or they look at me and say, you about the wor most worthless thing than breast on a boar hog. You know, whatever, whatever they tell me after a service... Whether, whether it's good or whether it's bad, I found that my strength comes through prayer. Because I've been in the place as an evangelist where you get done preaching and people come up to you and say, man, we sure love your preaching. Man, that was fun. We needed that. God spoke to you. I wish our pastor was like you. And something I learned as a pastor that I wish I could go back to all those churches I was an evangelist and say, you want, I want to tell you, you know why your pastor ain't like me? Because I'm only with you for a week. He's got to deal with you all the time. And I understand why he is the way he is. That's what I wish I could go back and tell some of them churches. But what it is, is that man's praying and worried for them. I'm just a high for them because I come in. They don't know me. I don't know them. I preach three or four nights. They get fired up. They get full. And then I leave and their problems are still on the pastor. Hurt people hurt people. When prayer is no longer the oxygen of our spiritual soul or the heartbeat of our church, our defenses are broken. When anything, any ministry in your church becomes more important than your prayer ministry, you can, you can go ahead and bank that your walls are broken. When prayer does not supersede every idea, you have broken defenses. When prayer is not the leading cause of our service, 
we have broken walls. The last point I'm going to give you, if I can have the musicians go ahead and come. I want to tell you is if we're ever going to heal from being a hurt so that we don't hurt other people, we got to be a people that keep short accounts. We got to be a people of short term memory when it comes to our hurts. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. You know, we could, we could go around the room right now, and I'm sure everybody would have an opinion about what this scripture means. And I'd be willing to venture out to say that 90% of your opinions will be based on how long you want to stay angry. If you're ready to forgive, you'd be like, okay, yeah, I mean, that means right now. I mean, that, it's simple, Josh. But if you're still so upset and you don't want conviction, you're going to be like, well, I don't believe it means the sun. Because the sun, actually, I mean, the, the calendar days were different back then. And actually, a day back then was from evening in the morning. So, I mean, really, it's not really mean that your sun doesn't go, go down on your breath. It's just talking about don't just let it go on. I mean, we, we, we will paint pictures in every direction to keep from listening to the simplicity of the word. But the Bible says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And there's actually a, a great study that I would love to get into on how the enemy operates in an idle mind. And when you begin to go to sleep, dreams and nightmares and things of that nature, they, they come to swamp you. Why? Because you're idly, you're sitting idle, you're sitting alone, your, your mind is in isolation, and that's where the enemy tries to insert. So if you go to bed already holding on to one of the enemy's weapons, his anger, you wake up using his weapons. This truth is so profoundly elementary, but we often miss it. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. The Bible often uses images drawn from agriculture, seeds and reaping and sowing, seeds of irritation and annoyance, not plucked out and dealt with on a daily basis will grow in your hearts. See, anything that you let be planted in you, whether it's seeds of hope and joy and peace and patience and kindness, or whether it be seeds of anger, seeds of doubt, seeds of fear, you know, just, the, just this last month, I've seen the fear levels of people I mean, to the point that gospel was no, the gospel of Jesus Christ was no longer the importance of a preaching sermon. It was making sure that we had enough gas in our, in our lawnmowers and making sure that we had enough food in our cabinets. And listen, I'm 100% supportive of that. I believe that a fool is the one that sees a day approaching and doesn't prepare for it. I understand what the Bible says of that, but I do not believe it takes the place of the gospel teaching of Jesus Christ. And I've seen the fear strike people, and everybody's going on there making Facebook messages and telling people, oh, you better get ready, you better get your guns loaded, and you better get... Half these people ain't never, ain't never shot a, 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 a duck on a Mario game. More or less, they're ready to just go to war. You know, every one of them bypassed the recruiter's office all their life, and all of a sudden, they're ready to fight for the South again. I mean, it's just, it's a bunch, that's what happens when you live in the South. There's a lot of ignorance, and everybody's ready. You know, they've been listening to Hank Williams for far too long, and they're ready to just rise up and fight. This, are we ready to fight? It's a, it's a rebel movement. Put you, get your guns out. And half of them guys ain't, I mean, they bypass the recruiter's office every day in a time of war. But they're ready to fight here. And it's just funny to me. But I'm going to move on from picking on people. <laughs> but, you know, the Bible tells us that this is so elementary. And these seeds that are placed in us, if we let them grow, they are going to grow up and they're going to become greater than what they were when they went in. That's why we hurt people hurt people. And we don't even mean to. But because we harbor that seed, that one little comment or that one little irritation, it grows and it festers. And before we know it, it's growing out into vineyards. You've got vines going both ways. Vines going to reach to the other ends of the, of the church from pew to pew and from, from the stage to the back, of the back door. And all of a sudden, that one little irritated seed because something was said wrong or somebody looked at you sideways or somebody didn't shake your hand or somebody didn't answer your question the right way and now we're hurt. And the next thing we know, we're not concerned with the lost souls that are coming in looking for hope out of something greater than this world can offer. They're not getting the help they need because we're too busy bandaging our hurts. Scripture tells us that a root of bitterness springs up and defiles many, Hebrews 12 and 15. A root of bitterness springs up and defiles many. When it finally spills out or it spits up or it, it defiles and it hurts us and everyone around us. That is why Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says this, Above all else, guard your, your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. 
When you let those things fester in your heart, you will begin speaking from the things in your heart. It is the very source of all we are. So what is in our heart spills out of our mouths? And it is by our very words that we often grieve the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not grieve the Spirit. But it is by our very actions, it is by our very words, the things that are coming from our heart. The trademark of love vanishes in the sight of the world. But what did Jesus say? If you want to be my disciple and you want to be known as my disciple, and you want people to know when they look at you, you are my disciple, they should be able to see one thing. Love. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love does not hold you to a standard that is unreachable. Love does not put expectations on it. Love should be unconditional. If I have to earn your love, then you don't love. If I have to buy your love, then you don't love. If I have to fit certain standards before you can love me, then you don't love like Jesus loves. Jesus came to save the sinner. Jesus came to save the lost. As you stand all over the house this morning, the trademark of love cannot vanish in the sight of this world. We need to guard our hearts and take stock every day. Because holiness is really just truth in the inner part. We need to keep short accounts for our own heart's sake. If the root of anger or bitterness is only just beginning in your own heart and is still undetected by others, go to God and ask for its removal. It's simple. I know, it's, I know Brother Josh, you just don't understand how bad I'm hurt and how bad what I'm going through. Don't let the simplicity of the word keep you from allowing him to help you this morning. You don't have to have an earthquake experience. You don't have to wait till the walls just crumble around you before you can trust that God can do it. It is as simple as asking God, Lord, take my heart. Be like David. Say, Lord, search my heart. And if there be anything unclean, Lord, remove it. Get, get it out. Lord, search my heart that I might not sin against you. Make me clean. Make me pure. Make me holy. Don't be afraid to ask for grace because God, His grace is for everyone that will accept it. When you begin doing this, you will be able to deal with that particular situation or that person in the Spirit's strength. When we're going to worship God, he seeks for people that can worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, you really want to worship God in spirit and in truth, how to fight his enemy in spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, Paul says, God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things and in all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Can I tell you, that the success of your ministry based on how many followers you can get. If you really want to look at it, if God had a Facebook and Satan had a Facebook, I believe he does. How many followers he has versus how many followers Christ has, the Bible says broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that find it. But straight is the way and narrow is the great gate that leads to everlasting life. And few there be that find it. The Bible says hell enlarges itself daily. So don't let the success of your ministry be based off of how many followers or how many likes or how many of men's approvals you can get to do what you do in the Lord. Because I can tell you in the last days the Bible says... That there is going to be a great falling away, but there's going to be a deception. Which tells me that the doors of the church aren't just going to be slammed shut where nobody can go to church. But it tells me that the church is not going to be a follower of Christ. That's why the deception is going to be made available. That the importance of the church and the success of the church is going to be based off of man's approval. 
off of fitting into the culture and fitting into the world rather than fitting into the Word. If the root has already spilled out and hurt others, am I, am I, am I, is it too late? Absolutely not. The Bible says go and confess your sins one to another. If you have an alt against your brother, go to him. Make it right. Listen, you ain't got to stand there until they decide to forgive you. All you can do is confess and move on. You can't make people forgive you. But you got to make it right for you. Because God has a purpose for you and a plan for you. We don't want to be a hurt church or a wounded church. We want to be a united church. One that realizes that we can be different and we can still operate together. Our, our United States military, one of the most powerful military on the face of this planet, it has people from every walks of life. It has people that growing up I probably would have never had a relationship with. But we found ourselves out there on a battlefield one day. And we love to talk like heroes and say, we're here fighting for the freedom of our country. But can I tell you the God's honest truth? That's not true. You're fighting for the man on your left and on your right that said, I'll lay my life down with you. Because if I can bring you back and you can bring me back, our freedoms will be preserved when we get back. So I'm fighting for you and you're fighting for me. No matter what our differences are, we signed up for the same thing. We signed up saying we'll defend our Constitution against foreign and domestic terrorists. We will, we will stand up, Lord, and we will, we will fight together to defend ourselves from the enemies in this world and the enemies of the church. I will fight within the church. I will fight within my home. But, Lord, I'll never stop fighting for the liberties and the freedoms that your blood bought for me. It doesn't matter that we're different. It doesn't matter that we don't like the same music. It doesn't matter that we don't dress the same. What matters is that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as being sufficient enough. Just like He saved me, He saved you. And He'll save those together to reach. The Bible says if one can put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand. That's why the enemy is after our unity. We can come together. There's nothing we can't build. Go look at the Tower of Bible, even God Himself. In their unity, there's nothing they can't accomplish. And He confused their language. But when they went to try to build it the right way in Acts chapter 2, He brought their language into one accord with the Holy Spirit. So what I want to tell you this morning is we get ready to pray. If you've ever been hurt by the church, by this church or any other church, can I tell you, just let it, just let it go. Let it go and say, Lord, I'm here to serve you. And I'm not going to let this, this seed of irritation, I'm not going to let this seed of doubt, I'm not going to let this seed of, of, of anxiety spring up and cause more damage. I'm going to let it go today. I'm cutting it at the root, Lord God. And I want you to fill me up to overflowing. Always be alert to the seeds that you allow in your heart. Because no matter what they are, they will all eventually produce the fruit of some kind or another. But can I tell you how to evaluate the seeds of your heart? Galatians 5.22 The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness. And here's the big one, guys. Self-control. See, Jezebel tries to control others. The Holy Spirit gives you the ability for self-control. It isn't your job to control me or anybody around you. You need self-control. And if I have self-control and you have self-control and our eyes are fixed on the same prize, there is nothing we cannot reach. You are blessed to be a blessing. You are the apple of God's eye. You are, there's a reason that you are called by God. You've got something to offer the church. Don't let a little hurt keep you from being a weapon of, of, of spiritual warfare. Because we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You want to see the church strong again? You want to see this nation rise up and see a revival? We've got to repair the breach. But in repairing the breach, we've got to make sure we know what broke it the first time. 
It's obvious the enemy wants to break our walls, but what happens when we are chiseling away from the inside out? We got the ability to repair this morning because you are a son of the king. You are a daughter of the king. So as I get ready to pray for you and open these altars for anything that you might have need of this morning, if you're dealing with something in your life, if you're facing a hardship, if you just need some spiritual support from some brothers and some sisters, that's what we're here for. These altars are not just open for what I preach on. These altars are open for for you and God because He loves you that much. So as I get ready to pray and I'm going to ask them to sing, just ask the Lord, Father, is there anything that I've allowed to spring up in my heart that I need to let go of, that I need to cut that root down so that, Father, your fruit can be growing in my life? This is your opportunity this morning. Father God, we thank you for your many blessings. We ask you, God, to move in this service as only you can. God, you see each and every need in this house. I pray, Lord, that your convicting power would not just lead them to repentance, but would lead them to promise, God. You have a promise for each and every person under the sound of my voice. And I'm asking you right now, Holy Spirit, move in them as only you can. Touch their needs. Touch their situations. Lord, if we've hurt people, Lord, I pray for forgiveness from the individual. I pray for your forgiveness, God. That you help me see, God, where I've caused the little one to stumble, Lord. For I never want to become a stumbling block for your people. But God, if there be anyone in here, Lord, that has any ought against me, Father, I pray that you give them the courage and the ability to come and to let me know, Lord God. For I want us to be unified. I want us to trust one another. I want us to live in unison with one another, God. So I pray, Lord, as these men and women of God begin praying throughout this service, I pray, Lord, that you would just guide and direct them. For you are raising up an army, God, that cannot be touched with the powers of hell. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. These altars are going to be open for a few minutes. Worship with them. Feel free to come down and pray as you need.
Rebuild me from the ground. Yeah. All I want to see is you. They continue praying. I just I want to testify about something that's happened. I'm, I'm not going to give a name because I didn't. I like to ask people before I do that. But last week we preached in what we thought would was maybe could have easily been perceived as a difficult sermon. But we had a great turnout, had a great response to it. But my wife, I believe on Sunday evening shared a little clip of the video about the comment that I made that what you allow around you will manifest and scatter within you and she shared that and a little while later she gets a message a random message on messenger and says sister Ashley you don't know me but I was born in Thomasville when I was a little girl I moved out of Thomasville and I live in Texas now and I prayed for a child Years ago, and I, I got a child, but there were so many complications born. I don't know the details of this child, but I believe he needs our prayers. But because of what she went through with her child, there was a lot of trouble trusting God. And she was honest. She said, I'm going to be honest with you. I want to start reading my Bible again, but I don't even know where mine's at. But I have already made plans to buy another one if I can't find it. But it's been a long time since she's been in a church. She said, I would never go listen to a live church service. She said, more, I wouldn't go sit in one, more or less listen to a live service. And she said, but a friend of mine, said she, God's just been dealing with her, and said a friend of mine shared the live feed of Northwoods Church and went and so she said, I clicked on it. She said, I started watching. And she said, it felt so good. There are churches out there that cares when we hurt. That cares enough to accept the fact that even the best ministers in the world can make mistakes and hurt people. She said, I needed to hear that message more than you know. She said, I want to let you know. I'm getting back in church and I'm getting back close to God again. Amen. She said, so I want to let you know. If Northwoods doesn't think that they're doing what they need to do, they're reaching all the way to Texas and changing lives. Can we give the Lord a big hand clap of praise of that? And I pray that she's able to get on this morning. If she's not found a church yet, I pray that she's down this morning. If so, it's so good to have you with us. And we are praying for you and your children and your family. But I just want to say, God is good, amen? And I believe that the best is yet to come, church. I got one more sermon in this series, Repairing the Breach. But I hope that our focus on being repairs of the breach don't stop there. I believe that we've got a We've got a long road ahead of us. There's going to be some highs and there's going to be some lows. We can't give up on this journey. We've got to fight, y'all. And I'm, I'm praying that you guys will just hold on and keep moving with us and keep trusting because I promise you, God has got something in store. And I'm not talking about any, you know, 
The good news about serving God is, yes, you get personal blessings from it. You know, we want to do chairs, and we, we, we're changing a few things. And God, I believe, is going to provide and bless us with the ability to do those things. But when I say that something great is on the way, I'm telling you, I believe we're about to see Amen. a move of the Spirit. You're going to see some of the most broken people receiving their promise and grabbing hope and stepping up and being exactly what the world's told them they could never be. That's my goal and my purpose this year is I want to reach people and I want to, I want to defy the odds. I want to do, I want to tell science, you ain't got no business around me. You know, aerodynamics says it. A bumblebee's body's too big that his wings can't carry the weight of the bee. Science doesn't have the right to define me. Just because my record says that I'm broken and I'm unusable and I can't get a good job, let me show you what my God can do. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise this morning. I do want to remind you as we get close to the, we're nearing the middle of the month towards the end. Thank you guys so much for your support. I mean, about a month ago, about three weeks ago, look, I looked at the report, and I, what, I was kind of a little worried about our chair journey. But I looked at this past one, and it's, I appreciate your support. I, appreciate, well, I promise you guys, this, this is not just for our look that we're going for. We're going to be able to open up this sanctuary and utilize it for multiple purposes and be, be able to do more events. And especially with the COVID stuff going on, we're going to be able to offer that space and that gap that we can't give them in the fellowship hall. So thank you guys for buying into it and supporting it. If you are still willing to make a donation for a chair, we still got a little ways to go. But I've been in contact with the company, um, hoping to look at maybe purchase, make an order around the second week of March. So if you guys can help me and pray about what God would have you give. We've asked that if you'd like to purchase a chair, with everything, with the shipping and the chair, making everything else, everything total will be about $70, $75 a chair. But even if you can't make the full purchase, if you want to make any kind of donation to that chair, we greatly appreciate it. But um, I know that God's got his hand on this purpose, and we believe he's going to provide. But thank you guys so much for your spiritual support. Thank you guys for your financial support. Thank you guys for all of your prayers. We feel them. When there's days that the enemy wants to tell me I'm supposed to be hurting, I can tell when I got people out there praying for me, and I thank you guys for that. Thank you for all of our leadership team, for everything that you guys do. Um, we haven't, we've been um, made very clear this week that we can't go anywhere near that fellowship hall, but we have noticed all the hard work that's went on into this, and uh, to know that it's for me and my wife and baby Zeke, it means the world. So thank you guys so much for making us feel like that, and we don't expect it, but we sure do appreciate it. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close out this morning. And um, if you are involved or you have any questions about the baby shower, please see Sister Candy over here in the back. And uh, she can help and direct you on that. God bless you. We love you. Will you just stand all over the house? Let's close with a word of prayer. And that, please don't forget, Wednesday night, our Bible study is, go, is, getting, is getting gooder and gooder, guys. We are, we are getting into the synagogue and the... The, t the tabernacle this, uh, this Wednesday night, and it has been going good. So much depth and so much knowledge, but it's leading us up to um, a couple sermons that we're going to do on a Sunday morning. But this teaching is vitally important, not just for those sermons, but for your spiritual growth um, and understanding. But if you can't be here in person, please tune in live on Wednesday nights at 7 and get this teaching. And um, it is on live, so if you can't be here at 7, go back and watch it on our Facebook page. And... Uh, you don't want to miss it. So let's go to the Lord of Prayer. Father God, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your word this morning, God. We thank you that we recognize now, Lord, that we don't have to live in hurt. God, that we realize that things happen, things fall through, things fall out of place sometimes, Lord God, and the option is there to be offended and to be hurt. But God, I believe that you have opened up doors of opportunity that we can have relationships, we can talk one with another and be honest one with another and Lord, try to see each other's perspectives before we make a judgment call and become offended. I pray, God, that we don't let the root of bitterness take place in our hearts, but, God, that we would let the joy, that unspeakable joy, be what we grow in our hearts. God, that 
that undeniable, unspeakable, unshakable peace, Lord God, that only you can give. That passeth all understanding. Lord, let us go out of this place today and be that light that guides people to the Father. We give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have an awesome day.